Thank you. All right, we're going to do one more round of questions. We're going to take a short break after that, and then we'll do the final round, um, which is a different format. All right, Mr. Pollard. This question is from Brian from Occupy Maine. He writes, the Occupy movement has changed the national conversation in a dramatic way. Inequality in income, opportunity, and wealth is openly talked about as widely as before the stock market crash of 1929 and the Great Depression. The Occupy movement carries this message, resonating with people across a broad spectrum of the middle and lower income brackets. What can the Occupy movement do to bring this message to the broader public? I, I believe the Occupy movement has done an excellent job of bringing this message to the broader public. Um, I think it, the movement will continue to unify, to, to uh, evolve, and I, I've actually had a thought. The word Occupy, to me, it sounds somewhat militaristic, and I, I, I am a pacifist, and I believe in sometimes peace through strength. Theodore Roosevelt said the reason for a good navy is not the provocation of war, but it's the surest guarantee of peace. And, um, and, and, uh, but I would say, Continuing to evolve, uh, gathering feedback from people outside the movement of what's working, what's not working. Personally, Occupy has, as I was saying, sort of an aggressive tone, and, and I throw out the new term of uh, unify meme. That really, you know, and I think of making some t-shirts for the campaign that say, I am the 100%, and then we're all in this together on the back. And I, I grew up in Blue Hill with a number of members of the 1%, and some of them are very generous, philanthropists and uh, create a lot of opportunity for people and run very excellent companies and I think you know to reach out to the wealthy individuals and appeal to their better nature and say can you please be more philanthropic rather than an adversarial relationship which which I think there's an element of both but I think of, of um, how does the movement evolve is difficult in 90 seconds but I think focusing on unification rather than division is one way to go. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Dunlap, as a former Secretary of State charged with overseeing fair elections, what is your opinion on the recent attempts to pass voter ID laws and other statutes that make it more difficult for voters to get to the polls and cast their ballots? Do you see the U.S. Senate as the appropriate venue to advocate for easier access to the ballot and to speak out against laws designed to make voting more exclusive? I think the Senate is one place where such advocacy can occur. Of course, elections across the country are truly run by the states. My opinion of voter uh, ID laws, the recent attempt to end election day registration in the state of Maine, I have to say is one of profound disappointment mixed with moments of abject horror. Um, <laughs> you know, we, we worked very, very hard when I was Secretary of State to provide very expansive access to the ballot for, for everyone. We were. The, the first state in the nation to have the best implementation of the Military Voter Overseas Voter Empowerment Act. We had a very successful deployment of the Accessible Voting Solution for people with disabilities, all with a mind towards making sure that everyone had the right to exercise the franchise. And some of that direction did come from Congress, so Congress doesn't have all bad ideas. But nonetheless, the, the movement around the country to have photo ID to, in order to obtain a ballot or to end such practices as election day registration or other restrictions, I believe, are cynical attempts to control the ballot and prevent vast sections of the demographic from participating in our democracy. And I would oppose them vigorously in any form, including the United States Senate. Cynthia Dill, an audience member, writes, if you were in the U.S. Senate in two, if you had been in the U.S. Senate in 2008, would you have voted to support the bank bailout, knowing that many major economists said it was vital to prevent global economic collapse? And then I've got a yes or no follow-up question. Would you have voted for the bank bailout in 2008? My recollection is that the bank bailout was part of the overall stimulus package. I could be mistaken about that, but I believe that um, you know. It was a huge effort to prevent our country from sliding into economic collapse. And so while I may have supported the banks uh, being shored up, um, I would nevertheless hold them accountable today. There was clearly uh, actions taken that were, in my view, violations of the law, and not a single um, person has been held accountable for the um, terrible greed on Wall Street that led to the collapse of our economy in 2008. 
So I have been, I actually sued banks um, as a civil rights lawyer, and I believe that um, banks should be held accountable. I think banks and insurance companies are the two institutions that have the potential to do the most harm in our society and should be reasonably regulated. And I don't support this notion that somehow the free market should be applied to banks or insurance companies. Okay. I'm not sure if that was a yes or a no, so let that just be your answer. <laughs> Um, okay, Mr. Hink. What specific proposals do you think are necessary in order to increase transparency and accountability in the United States Senate? I, um, in all cases, uh, would favor uh, complete transparency. Uh, we just recently had a, uh, a vote in the Maine legislature, and uh, it was uh, whether or not the working papers of the governor should be available. Uh, under uh, the Freedom of Access Act in Maine, my vote was yes. Um, if, it, uh, if it came to it, uh, I would vote in favor of the legislature uh, being required to do that. Uh, one of the issues that was raised about that is that the governor actually has staff, or the legislature um, uh, has very little. Uh, but nonetheless, I think transparency is fairly easy. It is just uh, doing things in the public eye. Uh, I think the United States Senate uh, has tradition that allows them to avoid transparency uh, too often. And uh, it seems to me that uh, we have to overcome tradition in a lot of things that the uh, Senate is doing. Uh, earlier there was a discussion of the filibuster rule. Uh, I might not overturn the filibuster rule today because it's important uh, sometimes. However, I think that uh, senators should have to stand up and actually speak to the issue on hand if they're going to try and filibuster. Uh, similarly, their papers, their workings, everything they do is done on behalf of the public and the public should have access to it and I would stand by that uh, as long as I live.